Okay, so really interesting look into blockchain. Our next speaker has the arduous task of ensuring our Christmas presents arrive on time every year. He is Noel Hasegaba, Managing Director of Commercial Operations and Chief Commercial Officer, Port of Long Beach, who will provide an outlook on the port. Noel? That's the kind of hustle that wins ball games right there. Well, good afternoon, everyone. You know, I'm surprised. Normally, by this hour, the half the crowd's gone. So, don't worry. After I begin my speech, all of you will leave. Um, I just want to take an opportunity before I, I provide the outlook I was asked to give to once again acknowledge uh, the work of uh, the Center for Supply Chain um, Management. This truly is a center of excellence, a model globally, and the fact that we can have this summit for the fifth consecutive year and to hear the relevant topics and how academia is integrating with real world problems is amazing. So I hand to Nick, his team, and the center. Please. <laughs> well, last night at the uh, welcome reception with the historic Endeavor Space Shuttle in the backdrop, and Nick asked a question. And the question was this, are supply chain managers smarter than rocket scientists? Everyone in this room knows the answer. But it reminded me of the time when I first joined the port of approximately 10 years ago, a good friend of mine, we were chatting and I uh, told her I was gonna be joining the port. And her response was, oh, you're gonna have an easy time. Is it port work, logistics, supply chain, it's not rocket science. About three months later, I was having a follow-up phone call with her, and I said, you know what, you were right. It's not rocket science, it's more complex. And the reason it's more complex is because of all the intricate parts. We learned recently with a cybersecurity attack on Maersk, the world's largest shipping line, how interdependent we've become, and how technology has helped us to move the industry forward, but at the same time, how it's introduced additional risk. So more than ever, at any point in history, in our industry, uh, coming together, addressing common problems, and identifying solutions to move our industry forward is so critical. And this is why forums like this are so important. So with that as an introduction, uh, at the Port of Long Beach, for those of you who may not be familiar, if you look at the San Pedro Bay complex, the Southern California Gateway, we are the eastern half of that complex. We have a total of 22 terminals, six of them container terminals, Last year was a, an especially difficult year for us. It was for the industry. We haven't had a normal year in about four or five years. Everyone keeps talking about the new normal. But last year, it was especially a daunting task because uh, the seventh largest shipping line in the world collapsed, filed for bankruptcy. And they happen to be the majority owner in our largest terminal, TTI. So for a period of about six months, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty surrounding the port and our ability to bounce back and determine our next steps. Fortunately, after a, a long process in South Korea to identify the successor entity, Mediterranean Shipping Company was announced as the entity that would come in as a successor to Hanjin at TTI. And today I'm happy to report that Mediterranean Shipping Company is well in charge of TTI. The volumes are coming back and MSC continues to be our number one customer by volume. And I know many MSC folks are here, so thank you for making the Port of Long Beach come back to reality. So where are we today? Now, this year is looking more like a normal year. When you look at the past few years, we haven't seen a traditional holiday peak. What we're hearing from our shipping line partners and really everyone in the supply chain is that this year, it looks like we will have a traditional peak. In fact, Beginning with April, uh, we started seeing double-digit increases on both sides of the bay, both ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. On the Long Beach side, in April, we saw 16% year-over-year increases. For the month of May, we saw and, and witnessed the, the highest May on record. In the month of June, we experienced the second highest June on record in terms of container volume. And just last month in July, uh, we hit a new record, our largest single volume throughput 
720,000 TU. So what we're seeing at the Port of Long Beach and what we see at the Port of Los Angeles as well is stunning when you consider where we were just a couple of years ago at the end of 14, early 15. And the reason we're seeing this, it's easy to point at the macroeconomic trends and say, yeah, the economy's bouncing back, uh, trade is increasing, imports are, are going up. But the reality is, the work the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach together with all of you under the leadership of Gene Soroka and the team at Long Beach in engaging the supply chain, defining problems, defining those opportunities for us to work together to identify solutions for these problems has been the factor, has been the reason why we've been able to hit uh, these new milestones. So we're very optimistic about what is yet to come this calendar year. I think between the two ports, we're going to see uh, some historic volumes being moved for our ports. And again, thanks to all of you for your support. But we realize that in order to be competitive in the future, we've got to sustain uh, the momentum. And the only way we're going to do that is by continuing to invest in our infrastructure. So what are we doing at the Port of Long Beach to remain competitive? Well, in addition to building our infrastructure out, we're investing $4 billion over 10 years. We're building a brand new bridge that replaces an aging bridge that has become a deficient uh, by its size and its ability to allow bigger ships to transit beneath. That bridge project is well underway. In fact, it's due to be completed by the end of 2018 with a new bridge opening up in 2019. That ship will facilitate traffic, which today carries 15% of the nation's goods. That bridge will also allow larger ships to transit into our back channel. But we're also especially excited about our new mega terminal we call Middle Harbor, the new home of Long Beach Container Terminal, which will have an annual throughput of 3.3 million TEU at full build-out. By the end of this decade, and I want you to picture this, the Port of Long Beach will have as one of its terminals the equivalent of the fourth largest port in America within our boundaries. And this terminal will not only have that additional capacity, but it will also uh, be fully automated, it will be a green operation, and it will be the most technologically advanced terminal in North America. So we're especially proud of that. We believe that that's going to be the key to move us forward as we uh, face the headwinds that we anticipate in the years ahead. But we're also doing something else, rail. By 2040, our long-term forecast suggests that in the San Pedro Bay, uh, the two ports in Southern California will handle 40 million container units. There's no way we're going to be able to pull those containers by truck alone. So we understand how vital investments in the rail is. And that's the reason why we're also investing an additional billion dollars in building out our rail infrastructure by expanding our capacity, optimizing the rail that's currently there, and ensure that every one of our container terminals has access into the interior, uh, in near dock, off dock, and the interior of the hinterland. So we're very excited about what we're doing on that front. But that's just the hardware, right? It would make no sense if we invested $4 billion on a computer if it's still running on Windows 95, right? Would you agree? So it's the operations. It's the handoffs between the supply chain segments. It's working together, the marine terminals, the shipping lines, uh, the railroads, the trucking companies, the warehouse, uh, labor, working together, putting our heads together to figure out what's the best, most efficient way to move cargo in and out of our ports. And we've begun that work. Over the last three years, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach have endeavored to identify ways to optimize the supply chain. But we haven't done it alone. We've worked with our partners, and many of you are in this room. You've devoted countless hours, and you continue to do that to ensure that we continue to bring prominence and attention to these important matters. But then Nick stepped up, and he offered his students, some of the smartest people in the world, to help identify the problems and work on solutions. And this is why this summit is so important to the ports, because this is a platform for all of us to collectively talk about some of the same issues that affect us all, and agree that in order to bring solutions to these problems, we have to work together. So ladies and gentlemen, I think that what you're witnessing here today is truly historic, and it's the beginning of many more things to come. And how fitting it was last night to have the reception in that place that today houses a historic endeavor. Because what is taking place today and the work that we will continue to make and do here at, through the center and advance the issues that all of us care so deeply about 
is what will take us into the future and keep this gateway the best, the most competitive, and the most efficient for all of us to use. So with that, I'll end my comments, and I'll be happy to take any questions or comments at this time. Yes, sir. Great question. His question is, how are we funding these projects that I referenced earlier? Most of the funding is coming from port revenues. So the revenues we generate through our operations, through these long-term leases that we have with our tenants, uh, most of that is, is going towards these projects. But in addition to that, uh, we are also securing funds through the federal and the state governments. For example, the Gerald Desmond Bridge Replacement Project, about 60 to 70% of that funding is coming from federal and state grants. And when I talk about rail, we understand how vital that is, and the, the federal government understands how vital that is. So we are in the process and constantly advocating for additional funding to expand our rail network within the port complex. Any other questions? I, I just had a question about with more and more big business relocating to Texas and the development of ports going into the Gulf of Mexico, how do you see that alleviating some of the congestion in Long Beach? You know, that's a great question. We, we, we don't think about it in the context of relieving congestion. We don't really think of that in the context of competition and cargo being driven away. Uh, we live in very competitive times, right? Whether it's up north of us in Prince Rupert down south in Lazaro in Mexico, or even the Gulf Coast, the southeast of the United States. Uh, the reason why we're investing billions of dollars in our infrastructure and focus on optimizing operations at the ports and within the terminals is precisely to keep that cargo from going away. Now you made a, an interesting point at the end of 14, early 15, when we went through the slowdown, we saw about 15 to 20 percent of the cargo that was destined for Southern California leave us. Thankfully, we saw, we've seen most of that come back, and we're, and, and we're seeing that in the numbers that we're posting on a monthly basis. But that's precisely why we're investing aggressively in infrastructure, to be able to handle the bigger ships. Today, the ports of LA and Long Beach are the only ports that can handle the 13s, the 14s, and in fact, the 18s on a regular basis. We've demonstrated our ability to handle the big ships. But that's the, also the reason why we're working closely with our vice, our supply chain partners, to continue demonstrating that so the cargo stays here and they have no reason to look for alternative gateways. Right? Is that it? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Nick, thanks again. Bye.